everybody. Thank you for checking out today's video. This one is going to be more so on the information based side of things, the details, the beard product nerdy things. And what we're going to go over specifically is the safety and regulations when it comes to fragrances and your beard products. Now, if you're like, that sounds great to me, buckle up. It's going to be a good one. If you're like, it's not really my thing. I understand. Thank you for checking the video out. But real quick, I would like to introduce myself before you go. My name is Dan C. Bearded, and I love all aspects of beard care. This is my career. This is my passion. I love making content about beards. I love informing consumers. I love helping companies. If that sounds good to you, if you guys could real quick, 100% for free, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up on the YouTube video. And if you're new here, consider subscribing, checking out the other videos. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for being here. I really appreciate you guys being a part of all of this. So what we're talking about specifically is IFRA or IFRA or the International Fragrance Regulation Association. Now, this is a body, a governing body of researchers and chemists that study the impact of chemical compounds and how they absorb into the body and how they affect the body. Now, this is worldwide, meaning most major developed countries have some contribution or are following the guidelines and regulations of this IFRA. Now, they take this stuff very seriously. They really vet the whole process. We get updates in the form of amendments. We are currently on the 50th amendment. Some of them are bigger than others. The 49th is arguably the biggest and most impactful amendment that we've ever seen. But just know if there's ever a change, if there's ever an amendment, they go for at least two years of researching and vetting, and then it takes a full governing agency vote to put it into practice. So this isn't something that's just a spur of the moment, that's just thrown on, and there's a lot that goes into this. Essentially what they do is they break down the different fragrances that are out there, and they tell you how much of it is safe to use on different parts of your body. Different parts of your body have different absorption rates and different dangers. The skin on your back is not as dangerous or as easily absorbed as let's say the skin on your face. Now this has to do with how thin the skin is, what are the pores like, where is the hair, is there shaving involved, is there other open areas like your eyes. There's so many factors that go into this and every part of your body has a different category. Now we'll get into all of that and how it applies to beard care, but what I want to start with is the legality side of this. This seems to be where there's the most confusion. And for me, I have to know this stuff through and through. I help companies get products into nationwide stores. I help companies whip, develop these products, develop their labels. And let me break it down like this. The FDA is in charge of cosmetics in the United States of America. Cosmetics is the category that beard products fall under. Now, the FDA is that same governing umbrella, that same governing agency that is in charge of prescription pills. It's the same umbrella that's in charge of salmonella outbreaks with food that's also in charge of your beard products. So you can kind of understand the priorities and the dangers. Beard products and cosmetics in general are way down on the list. It is not a major worry or time investment of the FDA. However, there are laws and regulations that are in place that you do need to follow if you are a cosmetic or a beard product company. And how this works is we have straight up FDA guidelines. I will link those in the description. I will also link the IFRA, anything that I find relevant, there will be links down below you guys. Don't worry, it's not me just talking and saying, uh, what's the source, uh, just me bro. No, check the links, I'll put everything down below. And FDA lays out very specifically guidelines on labeling. Things like how you should label solid products, things on how the font should go, how you should lay your ingredients out in terms of potency, right? They go into detail. The fragrances is not exactly the same. It is not explicitly implied in the FDA rules. However, it is implied through the good manufacturing practices which is something that you have to follow as a beard product company. This is something that needs to be in check for the FTC and the FDA. You also need this for liability insurance and everything else that goes with just having a company that is going to be ran legally. Now, this has been addressed time and time again by the FDA, specifically in court cases, and where they're saying, hey, it may not be explicitly written down, but we do have it heavily implied. We do have precedent with these court cases and with the way that we approach these businesses in the past. Now, 
essentially what is going on here is let's say you buy any kind of cosmetic, but we'll talk beard products because this is a beard channel. You put it on, you have a reaction. The beard product company has the due diligence to follow the safety guidelines and regulations of those fragrances. If you believe or anyone believes that they're not following those, there is a course to report them essentially and move up the ladder to the FDA. If the FDA gets a report and says somebody had a bad reaction and they believe this company is not following good manufacturing practices, the FDA then has to investigate that company. When they investigate that company, you need to be able to provide safety data sheets. You need to be able to provide and say, hey, look, I'm following IFRA. Here's our evidence. Here's our batch numbers. Here are our samples. You can check them out yourself. If you do that, the FDA is going to say, okay, they just had a reaction. Sorry, allergies happen even within this, the spectrum of legal regulations. All right, can't help you there. Now. Let's say that there is that same complaint. The FDA does come to you and you cannot prove those things, or at least to the level they want you to prove them. Whoo! You all essentially do not have a company anymore. The way the FDA approaches these situations is you are the least of their worries. And if you're going to be forced to take some of their time, they're going to absolutely throw the book at you and lay the smack down on you. You no longer will have a business because they're going to find so many teeny tiny code violations that they're going to throw that at you. And your best route is going to be to file for bankruptcy. We have seen this so many times. An interesting side note is we've seen exactly zero beard product companies investigated by the FDA. I know of companies that have gotten into big box retailers with illegal labels. They went later and changed them, but they didn't find out from the FDA. They didn't even find out from the stores. They found out from other sources. So this is not something that is currently going on with beard products, but an industry that's a really good kind of comparison to follow would be the bath and body industry. The beard product industry is less than 12 years old. It is a baby industry. It is just now hitting the radar. We're talking about in cosmetics, you have billion dollar big companies, multiple of them. When we're talking beard products, we're talking the biggest of the big are looking between five and $15 million revenue a year companies. Two totally different worlds and just a blip on the radar of the FDA. But when we look at the bath and body industry, right? When you have things like body butters and lotion and stuff for the bath, all that type of stuff has been around 20, 30 years longer officially than the beard product industry. They have lobbyists, they're really organized, they have great leaders out there. They have been shut down. Those types of industries, companies have been investigated by the FDA and completely out of business. We saw one just last month in Florida. There was one the month before in California. This keeps coming up over and over again. And that's one of the good, bad things about the United States. Our barrier of entry to start a company, a cosmetic company, is very low. They're essentially saying, here are the rules. It's on you to make sure you follow them. We don't need to check you first, but if you do it wrong, we're going to bring the thunder right? In other countries, it's the opposite. You have to get approval by the government to launch your company. Now, again, good and bad. In the U.S., that promotes creativity, that promotes innovation, that promotes competition, but it also can promote some bad practices and people not following those laws and regulations. And when we look specifically at those fragrances, take any fragrance that's out there, IFRA is going to investigate how that's going to impact your body. What kind of negative outcomes could come from that? And they're going to give a, a safety potency level. They will give you a percentage of your product that can be made up of that fragrance. Some of them are really high and you can use a whole lot of them. Some of them are really low and can be dangerous and you can only use a small amount. And some fragrances just straight up get outlawed and say, can't use these, they're not safe. Uh, for example, a specific kind of oak moss essential oil was one of my favorites and it got banned at around 2017 or 18. Can't use it anymore, unfortunately, based on those updates from IFRA. Now, the different categories are interesting as well with the potency and how you can use them. For example, cologne, whether it's a spray cologne or a solid cologne is category number four for IFRA and their allowance is very high, very, very high. One, one that I just looked at before the show, and I'll probably put some examples up throughout this, uh, this, this video popping up randomly in editing, but one that I looked at specifically for this category, number four for, for fragrance was like 17% you can have of this fragrance, wildly high as compared to the beard category, which is 5B, it was like 0.6%. 
So that same exact chemical compound, that same exact fragrance, you can only have 0.6% of it in your beard products, but when it comes to a solid cologne, you can have 17% of it. Now the reason is where these things are supposed to be applied. Colognes and fragrances are supposed to be applied in areas like your wrist, on the back of your neck, behind your ear, locations like that. Not very dangerous, don't have the craziest absorption level. Beard products are supposed to be applied to your face. Now there's two main kind of dangers when it comes to beard products. Number one, there's a lot of openings with your eyes, your nose, and, and in your mouth, that's a danger that you don't see with colognes, right? Nobody should be spraying cologne into their mouth or their eyes. With beard products, it's just really close. The second danger is this is an area of the face that commonly is shaved. Even if you have a beard, a lot of guys use razors to clean up their cheek line, clean up their neckline, and because of those microabrasions, those cuts, they have to have a different level of safety. It's the same thing if you look at the category for armpits or any other part of your body that could have shaving. We even have IFRA guidelines on open wounds. <laughs> if a product is intended to be used like medicine on an open wound, they have a regulation on those fragrances Obviously, it's much more harsh than even beard products. So essentially, and I know I'm throwing a lot at you guys, but I just love this stuff and I find it so interesting. Feel free to go back. I'll break down the chapters down below so you can see the different categories that they have. But that's how it works. There is a law. Now, are there companies in the beard space that are breaking these laws? Yes, absolutely. Why? Because a lot of people prefer strong scents long lasting scents. And you can do that legally. Trust me, there are companies out there that are strong, that are long lasting, and you can find the right combination. You can find the right professionals that can help you get there. But not everybody's doing that. Now, is that wrong? Is that bad? That's not me, for me to say, but it is risky. That I know for a fact. And so the idea that no beard product companies have been investigated is a little bit scary because once that top, once that cork is out, is it something that's gonna completely like sweep through the industry? And we're gonna see massive overall and look into this? I don't know. And again, I'm not saying this is a good thing. I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I just want you as a consumer to know how this works because I truly believe an educated consumer is a powerful consumer. I also want companies out there keeping this on their mind, keeping it on the forefront. And if you have any questions, reach out. I love this stuff. I know this stuff. It's something that's very, very interesting to me. There's different online calculators you can use to assist you in this. There's some just some common sense baselines that I can help you with on this as well. So companies don't hesitate, reach out. When it comes to business advice, I do consultations. I'm happy to help in different ways. Let's get that conversation going. But out there, there's probably a lot with this one. What are your questions? Is there something that you're wondering about IFRA? Is there something you're wondering about fragrances? What are your thoughts? What are your experiences out there? Is there something that just randomly popped in your mind? Put it down below with a comment. I do appreciate that, you guys. Loaded video, but I hope it was entertaining. I hope it was educational. And this is the kind of content that I like, so that's why I made the video. So thank you guys so much for watching today. My name is Dan C. Bearded. Please stay bearded and stay positive.